Hi there, welcome to this Java interview guide from In 28 Minutes. In this series of videos, we are covering a lot of interview questions on different Java topics. As you already know, In 28 Minutes is famous for all its interview question videos. We have interview question videos on Lambda expressions, multi-threading, collections, exception handling, and also we have a lot of different videos on JUnit's design patterns, Eclipse, Mockito, Spring MVC and stuff. In this series of videos, we are covering interview questions on OOPs, Advanced Java, Servlets, JSPs, Design Patterns, JDBC, J2EE, Maven and Eclipse. All the information about different questions that we would discuss is on the GitHub repository. GitHub.com in 28 minutes. In Hi there, welcome to this video on interview questions on J2E. Let's start with the basic question. What is Java EE? What is Java EE? J Java EE is nothing but a specification. So it just says a documentation or an interface. So you impl Java EE stands for Java Enterprise Edition. So if you want to develop enterprise applications with Java, how do you do them? Those are the different things that are specified by Java EE. So there are a lot of specifications which are part of Java EE, which defines how you develop a web application. So Java Servlet API, JSR340. So this is Java Servlet 3.1, which is part of Java EE7, which defines how you can create Servlet applications. Similar to that, Java EE is a set of different specifications which develop, which state how to develop a Java EE application. So what are Tomcat, WebSphere, WebLogic and all this kind of stuff? So Tomcat is a Java EE compliant application, I mean, appliant, compliant web server. So it's not an application server. Tomcat is a web server. So Java EE has an enterprise edition and a web application specification as well. So Java EE, you, I mean, if you edit to Java EE, you can create a WAR, web archive or a EAR, enterprise archive. Tomcat can run a WAR, so web archive, so web application. Tomcat cannot run a EJB. Part of the JEE is also a specification called a EJB. Tomcat does not implement that specification. Tom, in a Tomcat, you would not be able to run a EJB. So you would not be able to create a EJB and run it in a Tomcat server. So Tomcat is called a web server. On the other hand, WebSphere and WebLogic are complete implementations of the Java EE specification. So they implement servlets, EJBs, JAX, RS and all that other good stuff. Whereas Tomcat only implements the, uh, Tomcat does not implement the uh, EJB part of it, does not implement the EAR part of it. Tomcat only supports WAR, it does not support a EAR. <coughs> Whereas fully J Java EE compliant application servers like WebSphere, WebLogic, you can even deploy EARs. So WAR is a web archive. It defines how your web application should be constructed. For example, uh, this is one of the WARs which we created as part of one of our web applications. Uh, if you look at this WAR file, it contains a web INF and a meta INF. And web INF contains classes. These are all the Java classes, uh, all the common JSPs, uh, your library files are inside the lib. So these are all the dependencies that are needed to run this web application. These are all the JSPs and this is the web.xml. Web so this is a WAR file. So this is the content of a WAR file. When I extracted a WAR file, this is what was present. So WAR file contains all the things that are needed to run a web application, a simple web application. A EAR is a combination. It can contain a WAR, uh, then it can contain a EJB module as well. So and EAR contain multiple WARs or EJB modules. So EAR is one level above the WAR. So if you want to create an EAR with one WAR, you can do that. Or you can create an EAR enterprise application archive with multiple WARs and multiple EJB jars as well. That's possible. And EARs are what you deploy into WebSphere and WebLogic typically. I mean, not always. Most of the times you deploy EARs here. And WARs are what you deploy into Tomcat. Next, we would discuss what are containers and what are the different types of containers. If you look at containers, there are two kinds of containers. One is the server side and the other one is the client side. So when you actually download a Java application and run it on the client side, then we have these client side containers. One is to run a Java client side application, application client container, 
and you have applets which can run on the client side as well these are run as part of the applet containers very few people use this anyway so we'll restrict our discussion to java ee servers which are the application servers and uh, this application EE servers contains two kinds of containers. One is the Java container, the web container. The web container can run things like servlet. So the web containers satisfy servlet uh, APIs. And the EJB containers are where you can deploy your EJBs. All your enterprise beans, session beans, all of these kind of things are what you deploy in an EJB container. So if you look at all the typical web servers like Tomcat, uh, they would provide a web container. So they would allow you to host up, I mean, you create servlets. However, if a, if you're talking about a full-scale uh, web application, Java EE server, uh, then you're talking about a web container and an EJB container as well. Those are called application servers. For example, WebSphere, uh, WebLogic, these are good examples of the Java EE servers. In summary, a web container can run servlets. A EJB container is where you host your EJBs and Java EE server is made up of web container and EJB container. What is Java EE API? As we discussed earlier, Java EE API is nothing but a set of specifications. So there are a lot of specifications that you are looking at down here, which we will talk about a little while. Um, if you go to this URL, you can look at all the EEs, uh, parts of the Java API. Let's take a quick look at uh, the different things which are present in the Java EE 7. So there are a lot of uh, new and updated JSRs which are as part of the Java EE7. A JSR is nothing but a Java specification request where a community gets together and creates a Java specification request for that specific standard. So you'd look at, like if I look at the new Java specifications, there is a JSR338, which is Java Persistence API, JPA. So JPA defines how you can connect you an object, a Java object to a database. So JPA defines the ways where you can actually store your objects to database and get them back. Instead of using JDBC using queries, you can use JPA to connect to the database. So that's the JSR 338, which is the Java A Persistence API 2.1. Uh, the other one is the JSR 339, which is JAX RS, Java API for RESTful Web Services. As we all know, now the world is all about RESTful Web Services. I mean, very rarely people develop XML-based web services anymore. Um, JAX RS is the standard for building uh, web services. Uh, it's quite popular. Uh, Jersey is the reference implementation for JAX RS. And uh, the only competitor which is present, I mean, one of the main competitors which is present for JAX RS is Spring MVC, which is not really JAX RS compliant. So there is a little bit of play going on down there. So, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of people use Spring MVC and a lot of people use JAX RS. There is no real big disadvantage or a disadvantage except for the da fact that JAX RS is a Java EE standard so you would want to go with it but again Spring MVC uh, is based on Spring and uh, in my experience Spring always stays ahead of the curve so yeah it's a difficult choice to make uh, the next one is the Java servlet specification so it's 3.1 JSR 340 Java servlet specification defines how you create servlets right how your servlets are, how you initialize servlets, how do you execute servlets, do get, do post, what are the annotations which are available. All the good stuff around JSPs and all that kind of stuff is part of the Java servlet specification. The expression language uh, is the EL, I mean, uh, we use the dollar open brace to uh, write the expression language syntax. That's basically the JSR 341. Uh, expression language for me is a great, inter I mean, a great part of the JSPs. I mean, no longer a lot of people are using JSPs uh, now with REST web services and more of a, a rich front end kind of a thing, single page applications. Hardly anybody uses JSPs, but if there are people who are using JSPs still around anyway, uh, I think uh, going with expression language is really a great choice. Uh, Java Platform Enterprise Edition is the entire thing, so the JEE7. So that's basically the entire umbrella under which all the specifications are present. JMS, uh, Java Messaging Service, uh, allows us to do asynchronous communication and synchronous communication as well. So let's say I want, uh, like 
I don't want the user to wait for some message to get processed or some service to get called. Then I can use something like a Java messaging service. I just put up message in the queue and then forget about it. Or I mean, I'll keep listening for a response, but it's not important for the user anyway. Those kind of things you can use Java, JMS, Java messaging service to uh, build your code around. Java server, Java server faces is a very popular way to build the MVC application. Uh, I'm not an expert at that, so I will not really go into the details for Java server faces. EJBs, EJBs are the best. I mean, it's <laughs> not really the best. I mean, I'm laughing when I say the best. Uh, EJBs are uh, not really as good as they are supposed to be, uh, especially the EJB version 2 was really difficult to develop. So if I had, I mean, it took a lot of effort to develop, to deploy EJBs, they were not unit testable. And EJBs were one of the main reasons why uh, people shifted towards Spring. Um, yeah, with EJB3, it becomes much more simple to create components, but uh, I guess it's too late. Uh, nowadays, uh, I doubt if a lot of people go for EJBs, uh, if you really have good experience with GJBs, I request you to post them so that I can read them and learn from there. Um, context and dependency injection for Java EE. That's a good uh, introduction to Java EE. Again, I guess a little late because uh, Spring is the typical framework which is used for dependency injection. And CDI is kind of late into the picture, even though Spring is adhering to some of the parts of the CDI. I think... Uh, against Java EE is a little late with the CDI. I, I, I hardly see a lot of people using the CDI anyway. Uh, bean validation is another good introduction into the Java EE. So when I uh, do a web form binding or something of that kind, I would want to check whether the bean satisfies certain validations. And bean validation allows us to specify those validations using uh, annotations and it makes it very easy to define those validation as well. Hibernate validator is the reference implementation for bean validation and I find it really good. Again, uh, JSR 352 to develop Java batch applications is again one of the things which is based on Spring Batch. So it allows, allows us to develop batch applications on Java platform, long overdue. This is the 1.0 version, so I, would really w I have not tried it really yet. So let's see how it works. Mm, what is JPA? Uh, there is a complete repository on JPA which is available. Uh, you can go through the example in there and there are also sample code work in progress.md which has a sample code which you can try and go through. One of the important things I would really recommend you to uh, do after this specific video is to look at Java EE design patterns. Uh, there are a lot of Java EE design patterns. There's a complete course which is in here. I would really recommend you to go through that course and completely understand the Java EE design patterns if you'd want to understand Java EE. So all the, uh, some of the things that we discussed here would be part of that particular course and also you'd get a good idea about all the frameworks which are popular, Spring MVC, Struts, uh, how, what, are, what is a uh, uh, model one architecture, model two architecture, how, do you, how, how are Java EE applications typically developed. If you want to get an idea of that, then I would really recommend you to go to this course. Um, another important thing is uh, transaction management. Uh, if you want to understand transaction management in depth, then you can watch this video. It's here, the link to the video is here. So it's quite a popular video app with more than 25,000 views. Um, again, Maven is another important thing which is part of Java AE. Maven helps us to maintain Java dependencies and it helps us to build the ERs, WARs, and uh, it helps us to generate reports. I mean, there are a lot of things that you can do with Maven. And there's a great course on Maven. You can find that in here as well. If you really want to take your Java EE knowledge into depth, you can do the course on Spring MVC and JSP servlets as well. So those are the important things that you'd need to know. about. This video is part of a series of 25 videos which we have created. And all the links to those videos are present in the GitHub repository, github.com slash in 28 minutes slash interview hyphen guide. So you can find the link in the description of the video as well. And you can watch all the other videos as well. One of the facts that we really believe at in 28 minutes is all these interview guides are useful once you are an expert at something. 
or once you have a little bit of experience with that. So there are a lot of courses that we have Java EE patterns, Spring MVC, JSP servlets, Maven. These are all really good courses. We also have a complete five hour course on Java interview questions and answers. It's almost six hours of uh, videos on different things related to Java. So uh, those are the things I think you will find interesting after watching this video. And if you liked it, I'm sure you'll like the other courses as well. So give them a try. See if you like them. Uh, uh, you can make the best use of this Git repository which is present in here. Good luck with all your interview preparation. Until next time, this is bye from Ranga at In 28 Minutes.